fixing the money thing. Here I am in sunny Florida. What a beautiful day it is, especially since it's winter back in Ohio where we live. We're driving down the road. I've been down this road several times. I know it's at the end of it. The ocean, the beach. But wouldn't it be crazy if someone, we're only about really two blocks from the beach right now, wouldn't it be crazy if someone living in, in one of these houses had never seen the ocean? And you would say, well, that's, that's nuts. I mean, they live, you know, walking distance from the beach. But that's how so many people live their lives. They have the authority, they have the keys. God gave us the keys to the kingdom. They have the Holy Spirit to navigate us to the place God has told us, God provides, but they never are willing to head towards the destination. Why? Because they've never seen it. To them, it's foreign territory. They can't see themselves there. But we're driving a car, it requires keys. Learning how to drive the car, learning how to navigate the car will end up where we want to end up. So let me give you this advice. Number one, know this. And I said, know this, knowledge is key. You have the authority. Number two, you need to know how to operate in the kingdom. So you have the authority, but knowing how to operate within the guideline, if you will, the laws of the kingdom with that authority is key. Number three, you have a destination. God has a place for you to occupy on his behalf. And we have arrived at the beach. You know what? That's exactly where I was heading. And if you let God set your GPS, you'll get there. God will show you how. He'll show you how. We have two uh, podiums because I have one, she has one. We're trying to illustrate that you have one. We're trying That's to get right. you a, a picture that it, church is not a spectator sport. We want you to understand that you have a podium. Yes, you, you have, have a, a place voice. that God has called you today. During we've been talking about the walls are down. Of course, we're talking about Satan's kingdom has been defeated, Man. but there are still walls up. Not yes. Satan's walls, his kingdom, but because he has no authority, he has tried to erect identity issue walls, insecurity, inferiority, condemnation, where people will not step into the authority they have because he's built such strong walls that we see ourselves as weak, unable, we compare ourselves, and we're now ineffective. And that's what we're dealing about today. That's right. You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has given you life. That's right. And the Word of God says that Satan has no authority over your life. You've got the keys. Amen. You got the keys. If someone hands you the keys to the car, Go drive you it. can drive it, right? So you and I can drive offensively into the kingdom of darkness and take back that which is precious. Galatians 3 says, what has happened to you? Why are you acting foolish? You must have been under some kind of evil spell. <laughs> Did the Holy Spirit come to you as a reward for keeping all the Jewish laws? No. You received him as a gift because you believed. Right. Your new life in the anointed one began with the Holy Spirit giving you a new birth. Why then would you foolish? turn from living in the spirit by trying to finish by your own works. Right. Let me ask you again, what does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life and the miracles of God's tremendous power have to do with you keeping religious laws? The Holy Spirit is poured out upon you through the revelation and power of faith, not by keeping the law. Yeah. Abraham, our father of faith, led the way in our pioneering example. He believed God and the substance of his faith released God's righteousness to him. It Amen. is by faith righteousness is released to you. So don't let the enemy intimidate you. The second area attack Hey, Pastor Drenda, let me, can I add something go, there? Yes, you go wanna, for it. Sign for the, <laughs> okay, and then. Amen. My Amen. side. Hey, we're a team. Got the double barrel side We're here. a team. I want to, because righteousness is the Fire. first thing that's attacked. <laughs> I want to, I need, we need to have a clear understanding of how you deal with these things. In other words, as you said, Satan's going to accuse you. He's known as the what? The accuser of the brethren, right? Yes. He's going to accuse you, but you need to understand what we just read, and that is this is a legal position. If I said you're not a citizen of the United States, would you go, oh, I, 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 that's sad. Would you say that? No. Or if I said the house you have, get out, it's mine. Oh, it's all gone it? Would you say that? <laughs> you would probably take me to court if I tried to take the stuff out of your house, would you? 
and you'd want a judge to rule on behalf of the law. law. And so you need to understand this is a, your, your position in the kingdom is a legal issue, but Satan plays on your emotions. And so 1 John 1, 9 is a scripture you must know and know how to use. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you sin, what do you do? Wallow around, cry for a few days, back up. I don't know, but that's what people do. But it says this, we confess our sin and he is faithful and just. just. Now you need to underline that word because just is a legal term, meaning administration of law. Jesus is your high priest. Hallelujah. You confess your sin, he is faithful over the law. He's a judge, like a judge, he's faithful and just to forgive you. He does not have a choice. God does not have a choice. It's a legal issue, it's a done deal. He's faithful and just to forgive you and then to cleanse you of guilt or unrighteousness, the grace of God. And so you need to practice this and know this because your position is not based on feelings. Amen. It's a legal issue. And until you learn that, you're going to wallow around. He's going to kick you around. He's going to lie to you. You're going to compare yourself to the media. I'm a nobody. I'm ugly. I'm not handsome, pretty, whatever. I have no talents. You got to stop eating that kind of junk. That's right. Because that is not what God has for you. You need to understand how to fight legally like an attorney in a courtroom. That's right. All right, right. go ahead, Pastor That's Brenda. right. And because the wages of sin is death, there are people out there partaking of death every day. Right. They're out there in sin, and that sin is working death in them. Satan is dangling a carrot, telling them this is going to make you happy. That's going to make you happy. And as they're doing that, he's dragging them into hell. But you are righteous. And because you are righteous, you are called to go tell them they can be righteous. Amen? You can go tell them they can become a new creation in Christ. That Jesus yeah. has paid for their righteousness. Yes. That you are the righteousness of Christ. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But so can they be. The enemy's a liar. He's a thief. And he's stealing. He's taking people's lives and he's hurting people because they don't know the truth. Yes. It's the truth that sets us free. Amen. The other area the enemy will try to right. attack is God's character. Yes. Try to make people think that God does bad things to good people yep. to teach them something. Ezekiel 18, 13 says, God takes no delight in the death of any people. Very clearly. He takes no delight. Now, we are in a warfare. There is a warfare going on all around us. And there are situations that are aligned against us all. But we are to stand on the Word of God. And we are to speak the Word of God. You know, back when I was a young believer, I'd just been born again. My brother was attacked with cancer. I led him to the Lord during that attack. I stood with him. I fought for him. I would, at night, he couldn't sleep. I would lay my hands on him and pray in the spirit while he slept. And when I would start to go to sleep or take my hand off of him, he would wake me up and say, I see these demons coming at me and they're telling me they're gonna kill me, they're taking me. And so I'd pray in the spirit and I'd pray. We fought this battle. He came through it. He was healed and he was whole. But things began to slip in his life. Sin tried to work its way back in his life. And so the Lord told me to tell him to go go and sin no more, more, to go and sin no more. And I have to tell you, I was cowardly about it. I didn't tell him. And the next time I saw him, I physically, I knew the cancer was back. I knew it before they had even said it. And this time when I went back to him and I said, let's fight again. We won that battle. We can win this. Let's just fight again. The battle's already won. Jesus has already paid for it. We can fight this thing and we'll stand. He said, no. He said, no, I don't trust myself. He said, I just want to go to be with the Lord. And that was hard. That was hard. I still was like, no, we're going to fight this thing. We're going to fight this thing. And the morning that he passed, we were actually on our honeymoon, and I felt him leave. I knew something. I was just like, oh, something's so wrong. Something's wrong. But anyway, I called back and found that, you know, he had passed. And, you know, when he was going, he raised his hands up to heaven, and he said, I see Drenda over on the other side. There's a party going on there. Cross that river, and I want to go over there. His authority his will, his desire. Can you blame him? Can you blame him? Any of us, all of us, we are in this battle, this war field, but this is not the eternity of our life, right? This is not our final destiny. What you see is temporal and it's subject to change. And yeah. so someone chooses yeah. to go on ahead of us doesn't mean the word of God doesn't work, amen? amen. And so I let him go. And I kept doing what God had called me to do. Amen. But tell the story that you were disappointed. I was disappointed. Of course I was. I was angry at God. Can I be honest with you? I was hurt. 
I was like, God, I don't understand. And I had written all these scriptures in the back of my Bible. And so when I first heard it, I just felt like, God, everything I believe, what do I, you know, your, your faith can get shaken right in those moments. I didn't understand authority. I didn't understand that God had given us the keys, but he also had the keys to his own life. And so I was shaken in my faith and I ripped the scriptures I had written in the back, all the healing scriptures. I ripped them out and I took them out of our apartment. I took them out to the dumpster and I threw it in the trash. And then my husband comes home later and he comes to me and he said, Drenda, you lost something. And it had blown out of the dumpster. I thought, did he go down inside the dumpster? But no, yep. it had blown out of the dumpster. We know who did that, right? The Holy Spirit just breathed on his word. <laughs> Blew it right and out in front of our sidewalk. He picked it up, sidewalk. brought it back to me. He said, you lost something, I think. And it was the Lord saying, don't throw away my word because of a circumstance or a situation that happened. And so at, in time, the Lord helped me understand. He helped me yep. understand. As I got pieces and nuggets, I've got mm. clear understanding. As I heard from yes. my mom, what he did is he was passing. Yes. He wanted to go home because he did not believe he could stand on the battlefield anymore. And so, you know, there are casualties sometimes in a war. We are at war. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.